Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Reddit Aliens. I'm John. Thank you for being here. Great topic. Let's go. What Mandela effect freaks you out the most? Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. One Mandela affected my whole family once. Years ago, there was a football player in a rival team that always did a dumb celebration after he got a sack, and my family and I always hated it. One night after he did it, my family started trashing the celebration, and I said as a joke, we're all going to feel terrible when we find out he's doing that celebration as a request from a make-a-wish kid. Fast forward to years later, and our team is playing that team again. The player got a sack and did the celebration. I rolled my eyes and said, I hate that celebration so much. My mom instantly turned and said, don't say that, he's doing it for a sick kid, I actually like it. So I was like, what? No, there's no sick kid. My whole family then proceeded to argue with me. They all vividly remembered reading articles about it, seeing special report segments before games about it, and other information. Some of them even thought they knew the disease the kid had, and even extra details about why the kid chose that specific celebration. They all had these shared memories that they were sure were true. I was floored by all this and insisted none of that was true, so we looked it up. Not true. No kid like that ever existed. They still have trouble wrapping their heads around this one. It turned out human memory is not near as reliable as we think. That the Fruit of the Loom logo never had a cornucopia. What's crazy about that one is that someone emailed the creator of the logo about it and he said even he remembers it having one. Just had one personally. Went to a mall where there was supposedly a gym. Asked around and nobody that worked at the mall knew what I was talking about. Looked around and couldn't find it. Come back a few months later and it's right there in front of my face. You'd have to be strung out to not notice it. I don't know how or when it just appeared, but it freaked me out. Not a global one, just a family thing. Back in 2002, my grandma had her 60th birthday. My father took us home at 10 p.m. ready for bed. We, me and my brother, were 12 and 14 at this time. All went well. Over the years, a story was made up, Nelson, that we went missing after visiting the local playground after dinner at said grandma's birthday party. Some neighbors helped to search for us. The whole train of missing children in a small village thing. Fun fact, we never went missing. Dad brought us home, put on Toy Story on TV and left. My brother and I heard first about this in 2015 from different people on different occasions. Ah, you're one of the missing boys. I first thought they were mocking me for a different event. I got lost, but it was 2013. Alcohol inflicted, different story. But then they all tell us the same story about going missing. And the stories are damn close to true in every story. My mom is driving around the same neighbors to different locations to search old vineyard, old mill, etc. Sometimes I think I got lost in the most brutal way. I was lost and changed this plane of existence with another one. It sometimes made me think about my whole life. I remember when I was 14 or 15 or so, there was a massive piano store at the mall. I went with my friends. At one point we visited the piano store and played around on them, and the sales rep noticed that my friend actually played the piano well and let him play one of the $250,000 grand pianos. We went back two weeks later and it was gone. No storefront, no map away point, nothing. F's with me to this day. Maybe too late, and this comment will be buried, but anyone I know who has owned a smartphone, specifically Apple, at some point can describe a hiking hiker emoji to me perfectly. We all remember it in the same way. Emoji character bent over with a hiking sticker pole on the side of a mountain with the backpack on. However, this emoji doesn't exist, and never has. As an avid hiker and trail runner, I think I was looking for this emoji yesterday, so it's really weird that you posted this. And you're right, it doesn't exist. Did it ever? There's a very famous, perhaps the most famous overall, Swedish sports quote, supposedly uttered during the 1990 FIFA World Cup that everyone older than 40 remembers hearing and laughing at. It went something like this. During the quarterfinals between England and Cameroon, after England equalized the game with 8 minutes left on the clock. It's looking dark or gloomy on the Cameroon substitute bench. Let me repeat, everyone remembers hearing this quote and laughing at it, because it's a pun referring to both the outlook of the game and the dark skin of the Cameroon players, only that the quote has never been uttered. It's 100% fiction, even though the commentator believes today that he said it. 
No proof exists. The words were never uttered in the actual game, proven by recordings, and as it stands, everyone just came to believe it out of thin air and word of mouth. The Mandela Effect. Take my strong hand from the scary movie franchise. I know he said it. Me and my friends would quote it at each other during school. Multiple other friends have the same memories, but went to different schools. So I know it's not just my friendship group that got it wrong. Probably the Bernstein Bears. Spelling was a big deal to me as a younger child. I failed the spelling test and got in so much trouble for it, I hyper fixated on the subject until I was proficient at it. I distinctly remember thinking to myself that the Stein part of the Bernstein Bears was spelled just like the beer mug. Now it's spelled like Stain, I guess. But the most jacked up part is I know several other people that remember the same thing. Remember it being spelled Stein. A very large number of people recalled reading published reports that Fiona Broom had vivid and detailed memories of Nelson Mandela dying in prison in the 1980s. Some noted that a smaller group of researchers later showed that there was no such report, as they distinctly documented searching for such reports to no avail, and hence concluded there is no supposed Mandela effect. These researchers were faithfully quoted, but the truth is that the latter group of researchers never even existed. The Broom memories did indeed show that a Mandela effect exists. I'm commenting at 1.5 thousand comments, so no one will see this. I did. But honestly, the most disturbing Mandela effects are the ones personal only to me or my core family. Like when we all remember the same event, but with major differences. Or one family member remembers it completely different, but the rest of us remember it the same. Two specific instances are of my dad, brother, and I all remembering each of us getting a long, massive cut on the bottom of our foot. But we all only remember ourselves getting it and no one else. Example, dad says he's the one who got it. I'm convinced I'm the one who got it. Brother says he's the one who's got it. But none of us remember the other getting it. Mom was the tiebreaker, but she's convinced we all got cuts at the same time. And it sticks out to her because it was on the same foot for each of us too and all in a similar way, though our memories for the two we got cut are different from hers and that's also weird. The second instance is about a gas station around the corner of our house. I remember just three months earlier, my dad filling up the car with gas from there. Then one day he stopped to get a snack and I noticed all the gas tanks were gone. I mentioned it to him and he looked at me like I was crazy because apparently that gas station was just a store now and hadn't even had gas tanks since I was a toddler. My mom and brother were also very adamant that there were never gas tanks there, as in gone when I was a toddler too, so there's no way dad filled up the tank just three months ago. I thought it was a huge family prank, but I even asked a few of my friends in the area, and they all said the same thing. Ooh, just reminded me of this one today. When I got a job in a different city, very first day on the job, very first day in a new city, I had no idea what to do for lunch, except that I knew I wanted to go out and see what new city had to offer. Driving along, I saw a big boy statue, a cartoony boy holding a big burger over his head. Simpsons Halloween special did a parody on it, except he was holding a donut. Anyway, I see this big boy statue and knew this was the place I was looking for. This is where I was eating. A tiny burger shack that looked like it literally hadn't had any work done since the 70s called Sunny's, And it was amazing. I ate at this place a few times in my first few months living there. I always knew exactly where it was because you could see this 10 meter tall statue from various directions. Eventually the office moved to a different part of town and I stopped going. I found out a few months ago that it was being sold. What's going to happen to the Burger Boy statue? I asked someone. What statue? They replied. Turns out there's no statue there. A few people say they remember it. Maybe it was across the street or in front of a different store, they muse trying to remember specific details. Most people say they've lived in that area for quite a while and are certain there never was a statue. I've used Google Street View, looking at historic images from years ago, and as far as I can tell it never existed. So why is my memory of this giant boy holding a burger over his head leading me towards deliciousness so strong? What trips me out the most about Mandela effects is that when I hear of one I will ask my wife totally unprompted about it and see what she says, and every time she says the one that doesn't seem to exist. Two recent examples, I saw the one about the Fruit of the Loom logo not having the cornucopia in it, 
So I asked my wife what the logo looks like with no other info, and she described the fruit with the cornucopia behind it. The other one is in Scary Movie. The character is doing a spoof of the sixth sense, and he says, I see dead people. But we all remember him saying, I see white people. So I asked my wife if she remembered that scene and what he said, and without skipping a beat, she said, white people. The Nightmare Before Christmas Zero's nose was a red light, similar to Rudolph and not a pumpkin. I will die on this hill. The reason it ticks me off so much is because this isn't something I vaguely remember. I know. I know every word to every song. I can recite this movie off the top of my head verbatim. And Zero was my favorite as a kid. I actually remember the exact moment I saw the change and thought, what the F is that? I've seen pictures online of merch and people's tattoos where Zero is depicted exactly as I remember him. So I know it's not just me. Not a huge one, but it's solely a family thing. At the age of seven, we went to my grandparents' house to celebrate his 70th birthday, and it was fun. I remember hanging out in his room, and he was in a wheelchair. He had his hair combed, and he looked pretty nice. He was wearing a button-down shirt. He asked me, how old do you think I'm turning? And I answered, 50, and he laughed. We celebrated his birthday, and it was nice. I remember the 70th birthday candles. Fast forward a few years. I'm 12, and he goes peacefully with my family around him. We go to his funeral, and we pay our respects. We all cried for my grandpa, who died at the age of 69, five years and a few months after his 70th birthday. When I was a kid, I swear I remember magazines posting listicles with stuff like famous lines that were never really said in the movie, and no one anywhere imagined for a second that it was anything other than a collective false memory. But now I can't find any of them, and they all seem to be replaced with these strange articles about magically shifting realities, where nothing is different except for tiny miniature of pop culture from 30 years ago. I remember one of the first bits, this was long before it was called the Mandela Effect, was trying to remember the 70s, 80s, 90s sitcom where during the intro credits where they play the song and show a clip of the character and actor's name appears, one is painting with a paint roller, accidentally paints the face of a co-star, and then they turn around, shocked, as the actor looks at the screen, and their name appears as the screen freezes. There were hundreds of people on some old forum who explicitly remember this, but never found it. As I was reading this, I started seeing it in my head, and the person's wearing like white, like a white painter's suit with blue overalls, right? And he's got the big roller. I don't know where it's from, but I've seen it too. Am I right? I can't get over the death mask of King Tutankhamun. I was a huge fan of Egyptology when I was a kid. In the fifth grade, I drew myself as Queen of the Upper and Lower Nile with my pet cheetah by my side. I still have a lot of my childhood books about Egypt. When I was a child, his headdress had a cobra on it, and that's it. Where did the freaking vulture come from? When I was 15, a family member pulled me aside to have a conversation about how I never had a boyfriend and that's okay. They went on to reassure me that they had lots of friends who were lesbians and being gay was okay and that they would always love me no matter what. I was so confused at the time because I was definitely not gay, but I appreciated the sentiment. Fast forward to being 40 and super gay, and that person is the only relative I've left. I don't see them that often, but cherish the times I do. I recently recalled that memory and told them how much it meant to me when I was figuring stuff out to know I had someone on my side. They said they never told me that and that they were actually homophobic back then and only recently, last 10 years, have any gay friends. I just learned that the Lindbergh baby was actually found, though sadly not alive, just over two months after they went missing. But I know for a fact that people make jokes about wondering whether or not that they're the Lindbergh baby. Simpsons have done it, American Dad have done it, etc. Why are they making that joke if the baby was found? Unless there is some debate over whether or not the baby they found is actually the Lindbergh baby. My parents were very involved parents, always knew what was happening with me and my brothers when we were kids. We also ate a lot of PB&J sandwiches, which I grew to hate, but I could never argue about not wanting to eat it because my parents didn't like to encourage pickiness. Once I moved out, I declared myself allergic to peanuts to anyone I met going forward, if the subject of food allergies came up, simply because I didn't want to have to argue about eating or being around peanuts. 
Well, somehow, word got back to my parents so that the next time I went to visit them, my dad goes, oh shoot, sorry I didn't get a chance to get the peanut butter out of the house before you got here. Careful with the pantry. Yeah, so somehow the parents who raised me managed to be convinced that I have a peanut allergy from a lie not even told to them. Here is a personal case that ended up being true, but not in an alternate timeline way. There's a chain of sushi restaurants called Kura Sushi. When one opened by me, it was called Kula Sushi, and I always thought it was weird given the others were called Kura. Until one day after a year or more of it being Kula, I got there and it is now Kura. I knew absolutely it was Kula before. Texted my friend asking the name of that sushi place, and he says, you mean Kura Sushi. I'm slightly freaking out until he texts me again. It used to be Kula, but now it's Kura. Pretty sure the US-based person heard a Japanese person say Kura and just thought, oh, they must be saying Kula, until the Japanese corporate side took notice that the name was wrong. The Fruit Loops versus Fruit Loops one. When I first heard about it, it made a point to check the cereal aisle the next time I went there to the grocery store and vividly remembered the box being spelled Fruit Loops. And then a year later, when I was walking down the cereal aisle, I remembered the Mandela effect and checked a box for shits and giggles, and it was spelled Fruit Loops. Hmm. Fruit Loops or Fruit Loops. They sound the same when you say it, but the different spelling phonetic versus correctly is interesting. I don't know. Go to the store. My family has a Mandela effect regarding me and Mexican or spicy food. All of them are convinced I love it. I don't. I hate it. Always have. Yet every year my dad will say, I made your favorite, salsa. His salsa always involves a minimum of five jalapenos in it. And when I tell me I don't like salsa, everyone in my family claims I'm lying. I'm over 30 years old now and think next time I'm going to scream at them. Calendars. Sundays have always started the week for as long as I've known. A few months ago, I noticed the calendar week started on Monday. Thought it was super weird and asked a few people, didn't calendar weeks start on Sunday? And they said no. Fast forward from then to about a month ago, and bam, the calendars are all back to normal and start the week with Sunday. I said to the same people, I knew the week started with Sunday and not Monday, and they all can't remember the conversation we had when the calendars were all starting on Monday. I still don't know what happened. There was like a solid two months of Mondays, starting with a calendar week, and then it disappeared and went back to normal. Well, my normal that I know. I was so confused and still am. In my town, kids go from first to fifth grade at our local school. At sixth to ninth grade, we change schools because we don't have enough rooms. So when I started sixth grade and went to the new school for the first time at a place outdoors, me and my classmates, along with the 6th grade, which we knew were having a conversation casually. At a certain point, I felt like we already had been there and had a conversation even though it's our first time being at that place with certain people. So, at a moment, I noticed everyone, there were like 10 people including me, staring like they were confused and stopped talking. Then I said, am I the only one feeling like we've been here before and had a conversation even though it's our first time? They looked at me and one by one saying, started saying, you're not the only one. I feel the same. Probably one of the most disturbing Mandela experiences I've had. Here's what I think. Yimv. One of the things we're told about alternate realities and others, what ifs, is that somewhere a decision was made and the universe split at that point. So now there are two universes from one decision. Now imagine every day there are thousands of decisions, millions, hell, even you yourself make dozens, maybe hundreds per day. So that would mean that there is an infinity of universes, far beyond trillions. But the universe tends to conserve energy, and creating whole universes would be, to say the least, energy intensive. So I have a theory. When some of these universes fall into an alignment of some kind, time, or atomic density, or gravity, or something, they are 99.9999999999999% identical, and these universes merge. That is, two becomes one, and the consequence of that is, things that don't match up are sometimes obliterated, but persist in memories, because memory and brain activity is a different state, 
and can hold two separate pieces of information, where now there is physically only one, the merger wipes out the other physical artifact. There can only be one. Well, sometimes physical things slip through, which is why we get oddities like Voynich manuscript or some ancient tools, but that's a personal belief and doesn't fit in so well, but not normally. All we have is memories that don't match the physical reality, because two timelines, almost identical but with a few variances, didn't completely line up. But that might just be me. I can say that since I came up with this, it helps me sleep better at night and just leaves me wondering about the vagaries on what causes the mergers.